Hello. In this problem solving session, we will solve a couple of uh, practice problems uh, that we assigned in the previous session. These uh, practice problems are related to pressure forces acting on submerged inclined surfaces in a fluid at rest, and also they are related to buoyancy uh, forces. Um, in this session, we will solve one numerical uh, practice problem and also one conceptual uh, problem. And we will assign one numerical problem and one conceptual question uh, for the next uh, session. As usual, I provide the uh, links for my lecture videos related to the practice problems that we will uh, solve in this session and also the lecture videos related to the problems that are assigned for the next uh, session. So if you would like to learn the material and refresh or uh, refresh your uh, knowledge on the material, I highly recommend you to watch the, these uh, lecture uh, videos. So let me share my screen and we will start solving these uh, problems. All right, you should now see my screen. Um, here, uh, in this problem, we have a rectangular gate, as you can see here in the schematic. Uh, this gate is uh, 20 centimeters wide or 0.2 meters wide and the width is into the uh, screen or into the paper. And uh, the uh, thickness of the gate, basically in this direction, is negligible. This gate is supported by a cylindrical buoy shown here. Uh, the diameter of the buoy is one meters, and uh, the buoy is connected uh, to the gate through a chain here, uh, at one meter below uh, water uh, surface. So somewhere here, uh, the gate is supported by the uh, buoy. The water depth uh, for this problem is two meters. Water is at rest. And uh, uh, at the given instant, the gate makes an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal, as you can see in this schematic. Uh, this uh, gate is free to rotate around hinge A but we will consider at this instant and uh, the weights uh, of the gate, uh, buoy and chain, we will assume that they are negligible for the problem uh, solution. And we will consider that water density is 1000 kilogram per meter cube. So for this uh, given uh, problem statement, we are asked to find the resultant force acting on the gate Okay, so pressure forces acting on this gate. Uh, the depth of the center of pressure location, basically the center of pressure location is where the resultant force acts. And in part C, we are asked to find the submergence depth L uh, for the uh, buoy. So let's start solving this problem. All right, so I placed the uh, problem schematic on the right uh, corner of this uh, slide uh, for your convenience. Here uh, I defined uh, Y and H coordinates. Uh, if you have watched the lecture videos uh, for the resultant uh, force uh, relationship, uh, we used, uh, we defined a coordinate system and then we derived uh, the equation or relationship for the resultant force. So to be consistent, uh, or to be able to use that equation, we need to be consistent with the uh, coordinate system that we selected in the derivation. So we selected the coordinate system in the derivation as uh, the origin of the coordinate system is at the interface of water surface and uh, the uh, planar uh, or the inclined surface. So basically at this point. So we will select our origin at this point and as you would remember, we defined Y coordinate along the inclined surface. So this will be our Y coordinate. And X coordinate, when we derived, we uh, consider that it is a coordinate pointing outward or out of the plane, out of the computer, uh, etc. So this X coordinate will be perpendicular to Y coordinate and it will be pointing towards you. Um, here, H coordinate, uh, we define as the uh, depth coordinates. So H will define the depth and it is basically 
pointing uh, vertically uh, downward from the uh, free surface. So origin is at the free surface and it's a vertical coordinate pointing downward. All right, so these are the uh, definitions for the schematic. Uh, first, in this problem, we need to find the resultant force. Uh, resultant force equation that we derived in the lecture videos is resultant force equals to specific weight of the fluid. Here our fluid is water, so specific weight of uh, water times centroid, the depth of the centroid, HC, uh, centroid of the uh, inclined uh, surface, and A is the area of the surface. Okay, so let's find each quantity. So specific weight is defined as density of water times gravitational acceleration. Uh, we know that from the problem statement, density of water is 1000 kilogram per meter cube. Gravitational acceleration is 9.81 uh, meter per second square. So a specific weight is 9810 Newton per meter cube. Next is depth of the centroid. Uh, we have a rectangular gate. Uh, so this is, let's say this is our rectangle. B is the this length of the this side of the uh, rectangle a is the length of this side of the rectangle okay so centroid is def uh, denoted by c here for the rectangle it is at the center of the rectangle so the distances are b over 2 here b over 2 a over 2 a over 2 so it is the middle point for the rectangle so this is for the centroid location uh, for the next part of the problem, we will also need the moment of inertia of the rectangle. And moment of inertia of the rectangle is defined as A times B cubed. So A times B cubed divided by 12. So moment of inertia for common shapes are typically tabulated. But if uh, you cannot find uh, that tabulated value, you can also calculate moment of inertia for different uh, geometries. So centroid location is then at the center of this rectangle here. Our rectangle is effectively from y equals to zero at this point to the hinge. So centroid is the middle point because two meters is the water depth. One meter is at this point. So the middle point is this location. And uh, so our depth of centroid is basically one meter. Next, we want to calculate the area of the gate, the rectangular gate. Uh, area of the rectangle is A times B. In this case, uh, we have uh, width of the gate as 0.2 meters into the board, into the uh, computer screen. So 0.2 is A, and then we need the distance B, which is from Y equals to zero all the way to the hinge, will give us the length B. So we know that depth of water is two meters. So, uh, and we know that the angle of inclination is 45 degrees. So two meters is this vertical distance. And from trigonometry, we can calculate that the distance from y equals to zero to uh, the hinge A is two divided by sine 45 degrees. So if you do the calculation, that area is 0.566 uh, meters square. Then we can easily calculate the resultant force, which is a uh, specific weight times uh, 9,810, which is specific weight value, times uh, the depth of centroid, which is uh, one meters, times area of the gate, which is 0.566 uh, meters square. And this is equal to 5,549 Newton. So this is the magnitude of the resultant force. We know that resultant force acts perpendicular to the surface. So resultant force is the direction uh, line of action is here. So it is perpendicular to the surface and resultant force acts at the center of pressure location, which is what we will calculate in the next uh, part. So, uh, we will calculate the center of uh, pressure, uh, the depth of the center of pressure location. 
And the equation for uh, center of pressure, y coordinate of the center of pressure, is uh, given as the moment of inertia of the, uh, around the centroid divided by the y coordinate of the centroid times area of the uh, uh, inclined surface, which is a gate, a rectangular gate in this case, plus y coordinate of the centroid. So this is the equation for the y coordinate of the center of uh, pressure. Uh, we know that moment of inertia is defined as AB cube over 12. A is 0.2 in this uh, rectangular gate. B is, uh, we just calculated it is two meters divided by sine 45 degrees. So basically this distance, two meters divided by sine 45 degrees will give us this distance. And it is cube of this value. So we take the cube and divide by 12. So when we do the calculation, moment of inertia around the centroid is 0 0.377 uh, meter to the power four. Next, we need to calculate the y coordinate of the centroid. We know that we know that h coordinate of centroid is one meters. We know the angle is 45 degrees. So from trigonometry, you can calculate this distance y coordinate from origin to the centroid is one divided by sine 45 degrees, which is 1.41 meters. Then we can easily calculate y coordinate of the center of pressure, which is moment of inertia 0 0.377 divided by y coordinate of the centroid which is 1.41 times area of the rectangular gate which is uh, we calculated in the previous part as uh, 0 0.566 plus y coordinate of the centroid which is 1.41 when we do the calculation y co coordinate of the center of pressure is 1.88 meters in this uh, part, we are asked to find the depth of the center of pressure location. So depth of the center of pressure location is from trigonometry, y coordinate uh, times sine 45 degrees will give us this distance. So we know the y coordinate of center of uh, pressure. So we need to calculate the depth of the center of pressure. So it is YCP times sine 45 degrees equals to 1.88 times sine 45 degrees, which is 1.33 meters. So center of pressure is located at 1.33 meters below the water surface, which is below the centroid, because centroid is one meter. And this is always the case. Center of pressure is always below the centroid location. So somewhere around here, we have the center of pressure and our resultant force acts perpendicular to the gate at this point. Now let's move to part C. So in this uh, part, uh, we are asked to uh, calculate or find the uh, submergence depth of the buoy. And um, for this uh, problem, we need to consider the uh, free, body, uh, free body diagram uh, of the problem. Uh, so if you uh, plot the free body diagram, we have uh, two uh, forces, important forces acting on this gate. Remember, we neglect the weights of uh, the buoy, chain, and gate. So they don't contribute to the free body diagram uh, for this problem since we neglected uh, those weights. So the two forces that are important in this problem are buoyancy force and resultant force. This buoyancy force is due, due to the buoy. So buoy is pulling the gate up through the chain. So basically supporting the gate uh, vertically up. So buoy force, uh, buoyancy force is perpendicular up. It is uh, basically the, since the buoy is uh, chained uh, to this uh, centroid of the gate, so it is acting perpendicular, vertical up at this point. We also have resultant force. Resultant force acts at the center of pressure location. We calculated that uh, location already. It is 1.33 meters below the uh, water surface. So we can calculate that this distance is 0.95 meters. 
and we can calculate this distance as 1.41 meter. These are very straightforward calculations based on the lengths uh, that we know, and we use the trigonometry to calculate those. So this is the free body diagram for this problem. For the system to be at equilibrium, then moments acting at, era, at uh, hinge A should be equal to zero. Summation of the moments at uh, hinge A should be equal to zero for the system uh, to be at equilibrium. So let's consider that uh, moment is positive in the clockwise direction. This is just the convention that we choose. So resultant force x perpendicular uh, to the gate. So it will create a positive moment around hinge A. The moment uh, the arm is 0.95 meters. We have resultant force times the moment arm 0.95. This is a positive moment that is created by the resultant pressure force. And we have bu uh, buoyancy force that is vertical up. So the component that we consider is perpendicular to the gate. So we consider the buoyancy force component perpendicular to the gate. So we consider angles. If this angle is 45 degrees, if we consider a hypothetical parallel line to the or if, if you consider this horizontal uh, line, it is also, this angle is also 45 degrees. And we know that buoyancy force is perpendicular vertical up. So this angle is 90 degrees in total. So if this angle is 45 degrees, then this angle should also be equal to 45 degrees. Then uh, to calculate the buoyancy force component that is perpendicular to the gate, uh, we need to multiply it with the sine 45 degrees. So we consider the component of buoyancy force in this direction. So uh, buoyancy force times uh, sine 45 degrees. And this buoyancy force will create a moment in the counterclockwise direction. So since we choose clockwise direction as positive moment, then we will consider a negative sign here. Moment arm in this case is 1.41 meters. So buoyancy force uh, component perpendicular to the gate, which is buoyancy force times sine 45 degrees times moment arm 1.41 equals to zero. Uh, we already calculated the resultant force as 5,549 newtons. And uh, then once we substitute all these values in this uh, relationship, then we can calculate that buoyancy force is equal to 5,287 Newton at the given instant. So now we know the buoyancy, the value of the magnitude of the buoyancy force. We know that buoyancy force is defined as specific weight of the fluid multiplied by the displaced volume. So this is displaced volume. We already calculated the specific weight of the fluid as 9,810. And volume of the uh, buoy or displaced uh, fluid is uh, related to the volume of the buoy that is submerged, okay? It's a cylindrical shape. So with the diameter of one meters, so the, uh, the uh, base, area of this uh, cylinder is uh, pi uh, d square over four, which is pi one square over four. So this is the area. And L is the submergence depth. This will give us the total volume of the buoy that is submerged. And this buoyancy force should be equal to 5,287 Newton to have, to achieve this equilibrium configuration at this given instant. So if we do the calculations, we can show that the depth of submergence for buoy is 0 0.686 meters, okay? So this is the answer for part C and for this problem. So L is equal to 0 0.686 meters. All right. So for the conceptual question, um, we have two hollow spherical buoys, as you can see here in the schematic. These buoys have the same diameter, 
uh, but they have different uh, volumes of hollow space. So you can see that buoy A has a larger hollow space than buoy B, as you can see in these schematics. However, the buoys both have the same volume, and we are asked to compare uh, the uh, buoyancy forces acting on buoy A, which is FBA, denoted as FBA, and the buoyancy force in uh, acting on buoy B, which is denoted by FBB. All right. So this was the assigned uh, problem. So let's look into this conceptual uh, question. Uh, we know that buoyancy force is specific weight of the fluid times volume displaced. Right, so this is the definition. Now, since both of the buoys displaces the same volume of fluid, they are both submerged. They have the same volume, although some, uh, although buoy A has a larger uh, hollow space, it doesn't matter because the volume of fluid displaced by these uh, uh, two different uh, buoys are the same since they have the same uh, volume, and the fluid that they are in has the same specific weight. Then buoyancy forces uh, acting on buoy A and buoy B are equal to each other, although they have different, point, uh, different uh, hollow spaces. All right, so now let's look at the problems uh, assigned for the next session. Uh, here in this problem, uh, we are given with a velocity field, which is defined as velocity uh, field, velocity is equal to x i vector plus x y plus one, j vector meter per second and we are asked to find the streamline equation and also we are asked to plot the streamline uh, that passes uh, through the origin for this velocity uh, field and for the assigned conceptual problem candle smoke represents an example of which of the following flow lines a is a streamline b straight line c path line and D is all of the above for an unsteady uh, flow. Well, uh, that's all for this session. Uh, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you in the next uh, problem solving uh, session. Thank you.